So where did you come from, Budapest? Yeah, my uh, my fiance is working in Hungary. She's doing uh, the the world without end. It's a Ken Follett uh, book. They did the pillars of uh, the pillars of the earth, uh, which was Emmy nominated for loads of uh, Emmys, and uh, Haley Atwell was in it. Well, my fiance Charlotte Riley's got the lead in the new one, and uh, she's out there till December. So I went to visit her. So we call it the world without Charlotte. <laughs> now the two of you worked on a movie together. We've done two together. Which ones? She was Kathy to my Heathcliff in Wuthering Heights, and uh, and luckily we, we you know and uh, an onset romance. Well, we became very good friends there, and then we went on to do the take together. And then after actually after Warrior, we got together. Okay, right. all right. So it was, it was simmering there for for a while. Oh, we're good friends. She's <laughs> my she's my best friend. So um, so you're you're jet lagged, and you're you've been doing interviews for this movie Warrior, which I went to see because. I had one of those experiences where I'm sitting in the cinema and all the trailers are going by and they all look like crap. <laughs> and then there was this one trailer and I went, hey, that looks really good. And I, that's why I went to see the movie and it's really good. Oh, great. You know? So, so you are um, an athlete naturally, are you? No, no, not really. I didn't, um, I, 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 got, uh, I suppose I got into athletics uh, late. When I was a little boy, uh, I would, I'd play at school, we'd have games and, you know, class where we'd have to do gym and, and, and stuff. And, but there were always bigger, stronger boys than me. And I was always kind of picked last, and, you know, when I was at school. Um, and I don't think I really was that interested. I was in the teams, but not in the first team, you know. Because the movie that I saw you in first was Bronson. I mean, obviously you've been in a lot of movies that I didn't realize it was you, like Black Hawk Down and stuff. But Bronson... That was being passed around town, like you had to see this performance. It was a screener that I watched, and that's what really broke you out inside the Hollywood community, you know. That the film did. But you were scary. Yeah, that was re that was really scary in Bronson. Well, the thing is about Bronson is that um, he, I didn't want to be scary with him. <laughs> what did to, you want? I, I wanted to. Um, I wanted to show. The man that I'd met and, and spent a lot of time with, uh, and I wanted to. Uh, at times, there were times when he was, to, he, you know, he's obviously needed to be scary because it, it was obviously that was the drama within the piece. But on the whole, I found him to be charismatic, right, and enigmatic, and as funny enough, as as uh, uh, oftentimes as large a character as he is in some of the more. Um, dynamic or slightly surrealistic scenes, that's who I found him to be like in real life. Mm -hmm. So it was a it was a kind of orchestrated show and tell of naturalism with surrealism. Definitely. So yeah, there were scary moments in it. You must be happy to see Refn getting such acclaim now. Have you seen I, Drive yet? I haven't. I'm looking forward to doing that. I saw him last in um, uh, Comic Con in San Diego. Oh. I haven't seen him since, well, since Bronson came out, and it's good for him. I'm glad that he's doing well. Well, you're well. both. I mean, you're both doing very well. I mean, when you did that movie, did you have a clue what was going to happen to you in terms of just um, becoming the guy everybody wants to put in their movie? No, I didn't, because when I did that Bronson movie, it was really important. Uh, it was something I'd worked on for four years. Um, Nicholas came on in the last two years of it, hmm. in a year and a half or something, and it was, it'd gone through a couple of directors before writers and and uh, I'd kind of given up acting in many ways because um, it, not in, in my uh, as a career because there's nothing else to do but I'd given up the hopes of ever being in something like Warrior or being in something like Inception or that and uh, that was never going to happen so Why had you given up? Only in here uh, I felt that uh, I'd been doing it for 10 years and, and I couldn't convince anybody that, you know that um I couldn't convince anybody that I could uh, to do it on, on, on a big big level. The stories went around. It was that's why Bronson, when the script came in, I stuck with it for like four years. And I wanted to see it get made, and I was involved from production from a production level, but a very early level. Even though I'm not credited, I was involved at a very early seminal level. No, that makes a lot of sense, actually. So well, did that tell you that hard work is going to pay off? I mean, in other words, do you do, devote a great deal of energy to each part to make sure 
it's exactly right? Yeah, I do. I, 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 um, I mean, when, I, when I'm a hired gun, as it was, as I now, I'm a hired gun still. Um, I, work, I work very hard. Uh, and then the next, there'll be, there will become a part where I, I'll pull away because you don't want to deluge the market, as it were. Because uh, I'm new to America, the last thing you want to see is Tom Hardy films all the time popping up, I suppose. That's not smart. And what I want to do is, I, I didn't want to ask somebody to do something that I couldn't do myself, so I write. Stuff that I want to do and create, like Bronson. Like, good. I look forward so to it. Anything you can tell me about? I have three or four, or five different things in development and production. Or, um, stuff in England. Stuff. Uh, uh, different things.